Well, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap. Well, it's Tuesday night again. Time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, Jimmy Cash and Paul Whiteman and his music. But first, here are the six hits and a miss, singing Hip Hip Hooray. Hip Hip Hooray, we're living in the USA. Come on, you Yanko holler thing. Hip Hip Hooray, Hip Hip Hooray. Americans will always say, we like it here. Stand up and cheer. Hooray, hooray. Every girl and boy can find romance beneath our spangled skies. There's lots of fun for everyone in our land of paradise. Hip, hip, hooray. We live in the USA. Let freedom ring. Come on, sing. Hip, hip, hooray. Now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, it's early morning at the Burns home, and all three of the Burnses are still sound asleep. There's Papa Burns. And Baby Burns. And Mama Burns. Oh, Tyrone, do you really think so? (laughs) What? What? Oh. Oh. Gosh, it's cold. Every morning since our mate quit, it's the same thing. Get up in a cold house and go fix the furnace. Oh, well, somebody has to do it. Gracie, wake up. It's time for you to fix the furnace. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. Good morning, George. Oh, oh. I would wake up there this morning. Oh, ho. Good morning, darling. Oh, ho. Now say good morning to your daddy. <laughs> Gee, he's cute. I could just eat him up. In fact, I think you I'm going to eat him. That's no way to talk. All right, all right. Uh, well, you better get up and fix the furnace, Dad. Oh, I don't have to this morning. We have a maid to do that. A maid? You mean Minnie is back? Oh, no, no. Uh, I thought maybe Lockie dropped her option. <laughs> Imagine having a maid again. Oh, yes, isn't it wonderful? We're going to have breakfast in bed this morning. Really? Yes. You know, when I was a girl, I went to a hospital once for three weeks just so I could have breakfast in bed every morning. And, uh, and you weren't sick? No, but I kept insisting I had a pain in my side. <laughs> and did the doctors fall for it? Imagine, they even took out my appendix. <laughs> and you sure put one over on them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, ring for the maid, dear. The bell's right alongside your bed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe we finally got a maid. Yeah, and you'll be surprised when you see her. Oh, good morning, Tootsie. Oh, did Madam ring? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me Tootsie Sagwell is the maid. Sure. Is breakfast ready, Tootsie? Uh-huh. I'll bring it up as soon as the coffee cools off. <laughs> as soon as it cools off? Yes. Those tin cans get so hot you can't pick them up off the stove. <laughs> All right, Gracie, you better explain why Tootsie is in this house pretending to be a maid. Well, it's part of our plan, George. What plan? The Beverly Hills Uplift Society give each other a boost in the crisis plan. (laughs) Might have known that silly club of yours was involved. Well, it's a marvelous idea. I'll bet. Well, you know it's almost impossible to get help now, so the members are going to take turns being each other's servants. Only a genius could think up an idea like that. Oh, please, Judge, you're making me blush. Oh, I say, I say. Now, take our laundry arrangement. I do Mrs. Taylor's laundry at her house, and she does mine here. Well, uh, that 
saves you both a lot of work. Well, of course. Yes. And all you have to do is carry our washing machine back and forth. <laughs> That's all I have to do? Sure. She doesn't live so far from us. And it's all downhill all the way to her house. And uphill all the way back. You never made the trip, George. You're just guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just guessing. And shall I place it on the table? Hey, look out for that footstool. Oh, oh. I think I tripped. Oh. Oh. Well, don't feel bad, Tootsie. I asked for breakfast in bed, and that's where you put most of it. Look at this mess. Oh. Coffee, eggs, butter, bacon in our bed. Yeah, aren't we lucky? Most people haven't even got it in their icebox. Yeah, we're very lucky. I'm sorry, Gracie. I didn't mean to All do right, all right, all right. Stop cackling, even if you are the only hen who ever laid a fried egg on a blanket. Well, never mind, Tootsie. Just go down and start all over again. She'll do nothing of the kind. If you want to cook that badly, I'll hire one. But, George, if you do that, what will happen to the Beverly Hills Uplift Society give each other a boost in the crisis plan? Just clean up this mess. I'm going down and get a cook. Tomato juice all over my pajamas. Wish that Tootsie Sagra would get drafted. Uh, I guess her face will always be in 4F. Hi, George. Oh, good morning, Bill. I just dropped by to... Say, you certainly like to brag, don't you? I like to brag? Well, yeah, I know bacon is hard to get, but do you have to wear a slice behind your ear? <laughs> just had my breakfast thrown at me. Do you know a good employment agency? I want to hire a cook. Well, George, I, I know the girl at the newspaper office who takes the help wanted ads. I'll give her a ring, huh? Well, don't bother, Bill. I'll just call the nation. Oh, it's no bother, George. She loves to have me call her. In fact, Barbara's so crazy about me, she'll probably put the ad in for nothing. Oh, good. Uh, hello. Oh, hello, Babs. This is Billy. Take this ad, will you? Billy. Yeah, Bill. Oh, you know Bill Goodwin. Look, who's got dimples and curly hair and kissed you last night, huh? <laughs> what? About 9.30. <laughs> oh, oh, he did? Well, maybe I was there at 9.15. Look, Dimples, just give her the ad. Made wanted, good salary. Oh, you remember me, long. Babs. We had a wonderful conversation. You said, what's new? And I said, swan soap. And you said, what do you know? And I said, I know swan is purer than the finest Castiles. Money can't buy a purer soap. And you said, get him. Gee, it was such a romantic conversation. <laughs> hey, just give her the ad, Lock and Ball. Made wanted, easy hours. Well, gee, Babs, Babs don't can. you remember? I said swan is great for washing the dishes because it suds faster than other white floating soaps. And since Swan is purer than the finest Castiles, it's kind to your hands, too. Helps keep them soft and lovely. So use Swan for every soap and water job in the house. And you said, uh-huh. Babs, don't you remember saying, uh-huh? Hey, Bill, hey, Bill, I'd like to hire a maid. Would you tell oh, me it's... Babs, don't you remember how I took your little hand in mine and showed you how to break Swan in two with a simple twist of the wrist? Look, Bill. So that you could use half in the kitchen for your dishes and cleaning and the other half in the bathroom for your hands and face? Remember? Oh, you do? Well, good. Bill, now give her the ad. Well, I'll, I'll be right over, sweetheart. Goodbye. Bill, you called that girl for me. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, I'll get a cook. Where's the phone book? George, what are you doing? Looking up an employment agency. Well, you might as well use the, the club plan. You'll never be able to get a cook. Well, don't worry. I'll get one. I'll bet you won't. Well, all right. It's a bet. You know that expensive hat I wouldn't let you buy? Yes. I'll bet you that hat. All right. All right. And if I lose, you can go up and get it out of my closet and take it back. This is Paul White, and the boys and I would like to pay a little tribute to a good neighbor with our arrangement of Brazil.
Well, Gracie, you said it was impossible to hire any help. But just look in the other room. There are four or five women waiting to be interviewed. Oh, George, you're making a big mistake. You ought to use our Beverly Hills Uplift Society to give each other a boost in the crisis plan. Gracie, Gracie, I don't want to hear any well, more about it. Well, it's a wonderful it. plan, George. They boost you today, and you boost them tomorrow. I can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I'd like to boost them right... George! Out... Oh, well, forget the plan, Gracie. Forget the club plan. I'll show you how to handle the help situation. Okay, I'll see the first applicant. Now, madam... I'm going to be businesslike about this and not waste any time. The pay is $20 a week and you get phases off and there's no use asking any questions because that covers everything. Do you want the job? No. <laughs> she? She was businesslike too, wasn't she? Yeah, I, I guess I frightened the poor woman. Say, George, I have a wonderful idea. What? Why not adopt the Beverly Hills Uplift Society? No, 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 no. I don't want those club women in this house. I'd rather have termites. Well, George, this is no time to be choosy. <laughs> well, forget it. I'm going to interview the next woman. Uh, right this way. Who's next? I am. Now, miss... Let's get going, Shorty. I ain't got all day. What's your name? <laughs> huh? Your name. If I cut my finger, I want to know who I'm suing. <laughs> Oh, fine. Oh, his name is Mr. George Burns. Burns is enough. I ain't going to call him Mr. because I'm as good as he is. <laughs> yeah, but... And I ain't going to call you George because you ain't my type. <laughs> yeah, but... So Burns is enough. Yeah. How many rooms in this house, Burns? Well... <laughs> there are four rooms upstairs. Yeah, but mind the upstairs. I'm strictly a downstairs cleaner. <laughs> Well, downstairs is the library and the living room. Well, bring the books in the living room. That makes one less to clean. What else? Well, there's a dining room and a kitchen. We'll eat in the kitchen. That makes two less. Now, wait a minute. Better bring the books in the kitchen, too. Why spread out? Now, wait a minute. What does this job pay? Twenty a week. Twenty a week? I pay my cook more than that. <laughs> All right. What's so funny? What are you laughing at? <laughs> you frightened that poor woman, too. <laughs> oh, George, if you'd only adopt... Gracie, I don't want those silly club women in this house. But, George, they only want to help you. And you know what I always say? Love laughs at locksmith. <laughs> well, what is that? That proverb doesn't fit. Well, maybe not, but that's what I always say. Yeah, and I always have to listen to it. <laughs> Next girl. You mean me? <laughs> yeah, step in here. Uh, how do you do? Hello. <laughs> are, uh, are you an experienced cook? Oh, sure. <laughs> I've had ten jobs in the last month. <laughs> well, why did you leave all those positions? I didn't leave. They fired me. <laughs> Wasn't your work satisfactory? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, then, why, why did they fire you? I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> well, I have, and good day. Well, Judge, shall we try the club plan, dear? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Honey... For the last time, I'm not going to do anybody else's housework. But you know all the people in the club, George. It's not like I was asking you to scrub a strange floor or wash a sock off an unfamiliar foot. Forget it. Anyway, there's still one dame left. I better handle her with kid gloves. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, hello there. I guess you're the last one. I guess I am. <laughs> well, step right in, <laughs> You know what they say, last but not least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my wife. I'm sure you'll find me satisfactory, madam. I'm an excellent all-round worker. Well, the work is very simple. In the morning, you dust the... No dusting. 
No dusting? Just as bad for my sinuses. Well, my wife will be glad to do the dusting. And the laundry. No laundry? I'm allergic to water. <laughs> well, uh, don't you ever wash yourself? Oh, sure. With olive oil. <laughs> Maybe she can do the laundry in olive oil. <laughs> Gracie, if you don't... Well, it would make it easy if you had to slip into your clothes. Mm. <laughs> Very hilarious. Look, miss, uh, do you mind sweeping? Oh, no. Sweep as much as you like. <laughs> uh, no sweeping? Rheumatism. Rheumatism. Well, can you cook? Oh, I'm a wonderful cook. But... The smell of food makes me feel yes. Lady, is there anything wrong with your legs? No, my legs are fine. Then run out the door. Out! Out! <laughs> well, George, you give up? No. Well, George, why don't you let me handle the servant problem? My mother always said that the wife should run the home and the husband should earn the money. Well, in this family, the husband runs the house. Poor Mama. She had the whole thing backwards. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Here's Jimmy Cash with a mighty attractive proposition. Why don't you fall in love with me? And okay, Jimmy. I'm tired of feeling blue. I want to know just how I stand with you. And now that you're in my embrace, this is the time, this is the place. As long as you're not in love with anyone else, why don't you fall in love with me? You're driving me crazy, baby, trying to get. Will you tell me no or will you tell me yes? You gotta go overboard for someone someday. Believe it or not, it's bound to be. As long as you're not in love with anyone else, why don't you fall in love with me? Well, now George is out making the rounds of the employment agencies. Meanwhile, Gracie has slipped Tootsie into the kitchen as their cook. She feels confident that when George tastes the Irish stew they're making, he'll okay her club plan. How's the stew coming along, Tootsie? Almost done? I think so, Gracie. Oh, the potatoes and onions look lovely. Let's see. Mmm, they do look nice. Which is which? <laughs> uh, the potatoes are the ones that fell apart. Oh. Oh, it's too bad we didn't have any carrots. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. The bananas we put in are practically the same shape. <laughs> oh, that's right. And with the skins left on, they're almost the same color. Sure, sure. George will never know the difference. I, I just know our stew will be a big success, Tootsie. Even if we did have to make it without meat. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's lucky you thought of that article you read about meat substitutes. Oh, it certainly is. Do you think that pound of Swiss cheese will be enough? <laughs> or should we put in the rope for two? Oh, I think the Swiss cheese is enough. Mm -hmm. Hiya, Gracie. I saw you and George through the kitchen window. Oh, Tootsie, I thought you were George with an apron on. <laughs> That's not a very nice thing to say, Bill. Oh, you're right. He's one of my very dearest friends. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry you didn't hire a new cook, Gracie, because I wanted to tell her about Swan, the new white floating soap that's purer than the finest Castiles. I wanted to tell her that Swan's a regular suds and whiz. Well, uh, Tootsie's our cook today, Bill. You see, we have a club plan where we all work for one another. Oh, say, that sounds like a swell idea. Can I get in on it? Oh, sure. You can come over to my house tomorrow and cook for me. Uh, well, uh... uh I've always wanted to stir up something with you. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no thanks, Tootsie. Why not? Well, uh, you see, I'd rather work in a home where there's babies. You see, I just... 
love to bathe babies with swan. Well, Bill... You know, a swan is so pure, it's kind to even a baby's tender skin. And if it's swell for baby, well, it's great for your hands and face, your tub or shower. Well, Bill... You know, many women have long considered castile soaps the standard of purity. Well, Bill... But swan is even purer than the finest castile. Well, Bill... Well... Uh, Bill, I have an idea. I'll come over and cook for you. Oh, no, no, Tootsie. You see, um... I don't have any pots or pans. Well, that's all right. I bring my pan. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> well, Bill, Tootsie's a wonderful cook. Just look at this stew we're making for George. There. Get a whiff of that. <laughs> Say, you girls are going to be famous. Really? Why, sure, you've got a new formula for synthetic rubber. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> He doesn't know what he's talking about. It might look like rubber and smell like rubber and stretch like rubber, but whoever saw rubber with bananas in it? Oh, Gracie, where are you? Oh, my goodness, George is back. He mustn't find me here. Well, uh, don't worry, I'll keep him out of the kitchen. Oh, uh, hello, dear. Back so soon? Yeah. I went to 12 employment agencies. 11 of them are out of business and the other one's a bookie. <laughs> oh, well, cheer up, darling. Oh, while you were gone, I got a cook. You did? Where'd you get her? Where? Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, um, I got her from the bailiffs across the street. Well, why did they give her up? Uh, why? Yeah. Well, um, uh, they went away for a rest. Yeah, that's it. They went away for a rest. Um, to Europe. <laughs> they, they went to Europe for a rest? Well, you see... Live in New York under the elevator, and he can't rest unless there's a lot of noise. So, Gracie, he... Gracie, I'd like to see this cook. Oh, well, no, no, you can't, George. She's very temperamental. She's scared of men. She's scared of men? Well, yeah, you see, her mother was once frightened by her father, who was a man. And ever since. <laughs> Gracie, I'm going in to see this cook. Oh, well, wait, George. She's very temperamental. But I want to talk to her. What's her name? Her name? Yeah. Oh, it's, um, uh, Bridget. Oh, I- I'll tell you what, George. Uh, talk to her through the kitchen door. For what? I'm going in there. Oh, no, you're not. Gracie, what's Shh. the thing? Lock the door. Let me in there. Yeah. Let me in. Uh, George, uh, Bridget doesn't want you in here, do you, Bridget? Oh, fasten that, I don't. I'll have no man tracking up me white kitchen with his big feet. <laughs> was that Bridget who just spoke? Well, of course it was, George. She's Irish. Aren't you, Bridget? Sure and that I am. Bridget, are you sure you're not Gracie? Oh, ha, ha, go away with you now. Faith and Gracie are ten times prettier than I am. And it's lucky you are to be married to a Colleen whose eyes are as blue as the lakes of Killarney and whose fur coat is getting a little tattered, so why don't you buy her a new one? <laughs> now I'm convinced you're not Gracie. But, you know, but from the sound of your voice, Bridget, me darling... I'll bet you're every bit as pretty. George Burns, you stop flirting with me. <laughs> what did you say? Faith and I mean you stop flirting with your wife. Enough is enough. Unlock this door. Oh, Gracie, I think the stew is ready. It just collapsed. <laughs> oh, good. I'm coming right out, dear. Dinner is ready. Well, here you are. Just tuck hey. your napkin around your hey. neck. Does that smell come from this food? <laughs> Doesn't it smell delicious? Bridget says it's an old family recipe. This stew has been handed down from mother to daughter. Looks like one of them dropped it. <laughs> uh, look, Bridget, I heard you whispering to somebody in there. Which one of your club members is out there in the kitchen? Why, George Burns, how I'll be right back. I see. Tootsie! Oh, uh, hello, George. My, you look handsome today. New suit, well, goodbye. Tootsie, you come in here. Yes, George? Sit down and eat that stew. Well, I'd love to, but I'm really not hungry. I, I had a glass of water this morning. Eat it! <laughs> well, go, go, go on, Tootsie. Tootsie, eat it. And when he sees how much you enjoyed, he'll adopt our club plan. Yeah. Here, open your mouth and swallow this. Oh. Well, how do you like it? Well, don't just pop your eyes at me, Tootsie. How do you like it? <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Goodbye. Well, that's good. That is great. 
simply a wonderful idea. Now, there's no dinner, and I'm starved. Well, here's where our boost in the crisis plan goes to work. I'll just call Blanche Morton, and she'll come over and cook our dinner. Well, tell her to hurry. Is she a good cook? Good. She taught Tootsie Sagwell everything she knows. Never mind. We'll eat out. That's okay. George and Gracie will be right back, so I'm going to make a brief suggestion. Instead of buying lots of different kinds of soaps, try Swan for every soap and water job in the house. In the kitchen, Swan does the work of easy-to-waste package soaps. And in the bathroom, for your hands and face, Swan gives you as pure a soap as money can buy. And at the same time, gives you more soap per penny than any leading toilet soap tested. So be kind to your budget. And be kind to your hands with Swan, the soap that's purer than the finest Castile. Well, here they are again, George and Gracie. Well, George, our stew might have looked and tasted like synthetic rubber, but I got a pound of waste fat out of it, and I took it down to the butchers. The government can use it to make bombs and bullets. Good. And uh, what did you do with the rest of the stew? Oh, uh, how do you like my new galoshes? (laughs) The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your CBS station again next week, same time, when their guest will be Charles Lawton. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. And don't forget to listen to Swan's other comedy show, Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou, over another network every Friday night. And now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 